hell, going first is not easy. No! Hey guys, last summer some friends of mine and I went out to a local railway trestle and did a 30 meter long rope swing. Before I went out, I made sure to go over some quick physics calculations to make sure the whole thing was safe. You know, calculate the maximum speed you'll be traveling at, find out how much force is going to be involved in the system to make sure the safety gear would hold up, and, well, to make sure they wouldn't tear us apart. The physics is actually pretty accessible. It's just first year undergrad, or maybe high school, and it gives you some real peace of mind. All that said, if you're using this video as a how-to guide to do one of these things, don't. I don't cover any of the safety setup. And even though we may act like idiots, we do have quite a bit of training in rope safety, anchor systems, and harnesses. We aren't touching on that here, and if you try using this video as a guide to do this, then you're an idiot. Thank you. This is the trestle. This is me. This is me swinging. To see how fast we can get going, all we need is the total length of the rope, which is about 30 meters. The potential energy at the top of the swing is my mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the length of the rope, ignoring air resistance. All the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy at the base of the swing. This is given by my mass times the velocity squared, all divided by 2. Putting these two identities together, we get the following equation. As you can see, the mass cancels, and we can isolate the velocity to give the square root of 2 times g times h, which is approximately 90 kilometers per hour for a 30 meter rope, or 56 miles per hour. This is pretty damn fast. It's like driving down the highway without a car. If something suddenly appeared in my way, probably a tree, but possibly a TARDIS, I can expect a very painful pinecone enema, or an adventure through time and space, respectively. What's the best way of keeping this from happening? Well, do what any decent scientist does, and run an experiment. Hey guys, so no matter how comfortable you are with your calculations, you want to test it. That's why we've attached uh, this bag to take the swing first. So, we'll see how it works. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Holy crap, that's a big swing. That gets pretty close to the trees. Okay then, now it's our turn. Now that we know we aren't going to hit anything, all we have to do is worry about whether or not the g-forces of the fall will tear us apart. To give us some peace of mind, we'll calculate it here. We do it using Newton's third law. This just states that the sum of the forces in any given direction will be equal to the mass times the acceleration in that direction. The only forces in the swing are the tension in the rope and the force of gravity. The tension in the rope is greatest at the base of the swing. This is where I'll be moving the fastest and where the force of gravity is in line with the rope. Rewriting Newton's third law, we get T minus mg is equal to the mass times the radial acceleration. For a circular motion, the radial acceleration is just V squared over R, and it's always directed towards the center of rotation. The tension is then T is equal to mass times V squared over R plus mg where the radius is just the length of the rope. Remember when we calculated the maximum speed? Well, we can use that again here. Giving T is equal to mass times 2GL over L plus mg. But lengths cancel, and we're left with T is equal to 2mg plus mg, or 3mg. This means the tension in the rope is three times the force of gravity, or 3Gs. The million dollar question is now, are 3 G's dangerous? Probably not. The gravitrons at amusement parks are actually exposing you to about 4 G's continuously. So the shock here shouldn't be too bad. What's neat about this is that the force you feel has nothing to do with how long the rope is or how fast your maximum speed is. There is a really cool cancellation that just pulls the dependence out of the calculation. Now I knew all this before trying the jump. That means it should have been easy, right? System's hot!
Holy hell, I don't know if I can do this. Give myself a 10 to 5 count. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a long way up. Well, thanks for watching. Me and my friends make Idiots of Ourselves. Special thanks to PowerM1985 for inspiring me to make these science education videos. And to Noah Plume 99 for making a video on editing, edit, video editing so I could get my ass in gear and actually put this video together. Uh, hope to make more soon. Hope to see you guys again.